Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, as you know, I'm an Infinite Way student. And again, I'm going to talk about something Joel Goldsmith has written, and it is called The Letters. And it was written between 1932 and 1946. And you know, from what I can glean from these letters, he's a, trying to comfort his students. He was absolutely so involved with his students. He loved his students. He so wanted to help them. So to be on the path, there's, first of all, a lot of information about Christian science. And because I brought up that term, today I want to dedicate this program to Mary Baker Eddy, who is the founder of Christian Science and of, of really the person that Joel Goldsmith worked the infinite way from, shall we put it that way? That's not well said, but he was a Christian science practitioner for 16 years. Coming from the retail world, the business world, he saw a healing with his father and that was it. He knew he wanted to find God and when he saw a healing, he wanted to do that. And don't we all want to do that? So the letters are dedicated to his students and to all of us who are students who are trying to be clear. He, he mentions in the letters, you know, we wake up year after year disappointed. It's like, when are we gonna make sense of why we're here? Can we learn something to make this existence make some sense? He's very sensitive in the letters. He talks about the organization of church. You can be in bondage in a church. You can be free in a church. You can be in bondage out of a church and free without a church. He does feel, which is the difference between Christian science and the infinite way, that organizing can have its limitations. It gets political. It takes away the focus on the still small voice. And also, the key to the infinite way is privacy, secrecy, secrecy, and sacredness. Now, I want to talk about Mary Baker Eddy for a moment before I carry on about Joel, because he talks about the principles of Christian science in the letters. That, uh, that God is all there is. Mary Baker Eddy, who was a frail, small woman, very pretty, I understand, was not a well person. And she had her issues. Some folks come in with issues that are health, health problems. And she just kept going to doctors trying to get well and things didn't work out so well. But apparently, there, and this is not in the letters, this is something I remember from something I read, but she did have an accident that was pretty severe and the doctors were really having a problem trying to help her. So she asked for her Bible and why not? And she opened it up to a passage which totally made sense to her about her wholeness, her perfection, and the fact that everything was really fine. And she had a healing. Now, she had that healing, I am sure, as God's messenger because she had an assignment, and that was to found a church. Now, the church didn't come along right away. She tried to share her healing with others. She had folks come to her she had success with her healing. She shared the information to her friends that came to her. And I believe she found out that it wasn't strong enough to make an impression. So as a result, she decided to found a church called Christian Science, and she did. And as a result of that, it became popular at the time. It was one of the deepest ideas around God that existed in those 1800s. The deepest perception of God came from Mary Baker Eddy. And what happens with that? Criticism. She took quite a beating. But she also founded a church that had followers. So with the criticism, it just comes with someone, let's face it, ahead of their time. Joel Goldsmith takes criticism. Jesus took criticism. It's what happens when you are alone and you have a message and you cannot stop delivering it. You can't care. And she was strong. And you know, when you really think about Christian science and the metaphysics, metaphysics is not the five senses, not this physical world. It's beyond that. It's the senses. It's spirit. It's truth. It's the invisible world. It's the world of spirit. And she found calling on spirit and listening to the still small voice, which Jesus taught her in the Bible, 
she could be healed. And she wrote the uh, keys to the scriptures. And if you go to a Christian science church, you will hear a Bible interpretation on one side of the lectern, and then you will hear the Christian science interpretation, which gives it the metaphysical spin. And the metaphysical spin takes it out of the context of the old Hebrew, which is good and evil, and puts it into the light of the allness of God. So Joel talks about Christian science in the letters, and that the principle of Christian science is the revelation from Mary Baker Eddy was God was all there was. He's good, he's perfect, and that's all there is. There is no good and evil. There's no heredity for illness, there's no sickness. Now I know this is a stretch for those of us who do need doctors and we don't walk through walls yet and walk on water, but the idealism of this I find very exciting because if nothing else, it puts you in your place about the kind of work you wanna do because it's pretty exciting to know people have been healed this way. It has happened, it does happen. But the journey is by inches and Joel helps us with that. So the church grew, there are many all over the world. A lot of them don't hold up anymore, but they are still revising it. I think they're find, finding ways of recognizing that walking on water and being healed instantly needs guidance. And I think that's coming with the evolution of churches. And Unity, Church of Religious Science, we have metaphysical churches, which I suspect have come from the work of Mary Baker Eddy. So Mary Baker Eddy, thank you. This program is dedicated to you. I think Joel would like that because if it weren't for Mary Baker Eddy and for Joel's healing and seeing his dad and then becoming quite a healer himself, he was an awesome healer. He worked privately. He had his ups and downs, my friends. He went in and out of consciousness most of his life until he found consciousness itself, until he found that high vibration where he knew he did not have to go in and out anymore. He, was, he found how to detach from this plane because he got it. He was given the gift of revelation like Mary Baker Eddy. So another one who has a mission because once you have the revelation, there's no holding you back. There's no holding anybody back on a mission and we all have one. So Joel wants to, in the letters, help us take the journey step by step. And I find because he cares for his students so much, the compassion around the unfoldment, it does, it can come in flashes. Yes, we all get revelations, little glimpses here and there, but the journey tends to be because, and this is key, thousands of years of human thought of we were separate from God, we inherit. Our bodies inherit all of the human thoughts around our illnesses. I mean, you can't look around, turn on a TV without, you could have a hundred of them in a flash. That's inheritance. We are victims to the inheritance of illness, of sin, in death. All of that is what we are told is the truth. Now, Mary Baker Eddy told us about spirit and truth and it talked about the shadows on this plane that are the real world and that's the invisible world. So Joel tries to help us with what truth and spirit is. And the fact that we have brains and human thoughts, that we, we have concepts about God. Concepts and affirmations and all of that are wonderful for setting the scene for deeper thought. But the real work is realization. Think of the word of reflection, realization, experience. That's what the letters are telling us. We need to experience the revelation of God and it is there for us if we have the patience and if we are patient and work moment to moment, day in and day out. Joel also says, take a break. So I see those two conflicting kind of things. Take a break from all of this. You can't sit in a meditation all day long. You've got a life to lead. Uh, but on the other hand, that is supposed to lead us to thinking with the world that we're always involved with, that we can still be in a meditative state of isness, of oneness with the Father. He talks a lot about 
we are not separate from God. So our minds, our truth, it's inseparable that we can get away from who we really are. Jesus came in. Jesus Christ is a spiritual idea given to us by God to show us the Christ. Jesus Christ is a spiritual idea who said, the Christ that you see and hear and watch heal is yours. We're all in this together. You have what I have. I and my father are one. You and your father are one. You are seeing your father by seeing me. We all have what we need. Now, there's nothing to be added to us. We got it all. Now, the trick is, how do we experience that? Well, Joel, Joel's big meditation in the infinite way is meditation, finding the still small voice, finding harmony. When our brains are going 90 miles an hour and into the fear mode, there's our assignment right there. You've got to transform those thoughts, find harmony in a chaotic world which we are in. Yeah, we're busy, folks. We just are busy. The world is busy. I don't know if it's gotten any busier. It's just probably relative, but we have to find harmony. So here's a tip, and Joel talks about this a lot. Start your day on the right foot. Be prepared. Let your day unfold because you started right. Claim. Be proud. Claim the truth. Be born again this morning. Yeah, you are one whit whole. I love the way Joel says that. Ah, charming. You are one whit whole when you meditate, when you feel the experience and the presence. And he also says God speaks with dignity and authority. So when he speaks, you know what's going on. I really think that's pretty powerful. Yeah, you're every whit whole. Listen carefully for that voice. So we're looking for the presence, my friends, in a world that's chaotic, that's filled with separation from God, that, that talks of illness and disease that we've all inherited. And yes, because we have parentheses, as Joel puts it, with lifetimes and that we never die. Think about the fact you don't quite remember being born, I suspect. And when you die, you're not going to remember that either. All you're ever going to know is living. So forget the, the death thing. The death thing is interesting. If you go for mortal thoughts of fear and you really believe that you're setting up that death mode, you're setting up mortality when you fall for everything negative that isn't the truth. So that's how we wake up. We have to deal with that day in and day out. Oh, where is that taking you? Is that peaceful? Is that harmony? Is that scary? We have to fight fear because fear isn't real. And, and Joel talks a lot about fear is not real. And nobody can hurt you. Nobody can do a thing to you. You may fear somebody is out to get you and maybe that'll affect you. Because fear isn't real. It's not the allness of God. It's not the perfection of divine love. It's nothing. So that helps us when we get a little you know, our chemistry freezes over the thought of, or you feel something and it's like, oh my God, what's my body? What's the externalization within my body telling me that I have to be afraid of? We have to go to work. We have to go to work. We have to find the harmony. The fear is nothing, my friends. No one can hurt you. And you know, if you have evil thoughts about someone else, Remember, you can correct that. Correct the thoughts within yourself. That's a given. We all have to keep transforming those fearful ideas. But also, if you want the joy to return in your life and you've got a, an issue with somebody that is not loving, you gotta, you've got to correct that. That's, that's your job. You've got to correct that. Now, back to Christian science, in the front of all the churches, they have something which I think sums up almost the whole the letters, is divine love has always met and will always meet every human need. Now let's think about that for a minute. If God is divine love, and that is all there is that Mary Baker Eddy discovered and Joel as he found the love within him, as he actually was able to turn around on this plane and see that it's not here. That's, that's a lot of hard work to get to that place. That's meditating and 
and working hard. Divine love has always met and will always meet every human need. If you hung on to that sentence every single day, you would have nothing else to do. Now, Jesus saw every man as perfect. That solved everybody's problems. Everybody was whole, complete, well. That's what he saw because that's what he was. That's what he was given to see. He saw with the divine mind. And that divine mind, you cannot be separate from. And Jesus was telling us, oh, how many times? You and we are all filled with the Christ mind. I am coming to tell you that. Now let's talk about church. Jesus did not found a church. And in the days of the Hebrews, they, oh, they were into a punishing God, God who would take care of you if you were not good, and that would applaud you if you were good. So Jesus came in trying to say, no, 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 no. There is only a loving God. Now, I'm not sure the Hebrews really heard that. But, and because going into the metaphysical world and the invisible world is not for everybody to understand right away, it takes, it takes trauma, it takes discomfort, it takes sometimes illness, sometimes something life-threatening for you to halt and go within and say, oh my God, now I have to go within. And often lifetimes that are traumatic are the ones that do go within and turn things around. So Jesus walked the hillsides, he talked with folks. He, he just did not want to be a, a crowned a king. He didn't want to found a church. So he defied all that. So they went ahead anyway, and they had their own system. And Jesus was never forgotten by it. Think of that man and how he has changed lives. And think of all the varieties of churches that are out there that interpret Jesus' work differently. Yeah. But what is going to bring you harmony? I think not seeing anyone as evil or bad isn't going to, it's only going to come back on you. That because you're the divine mind, and if you want to be a healer, if you want peace, you just can't do that and have it. It just comes back on you because you cannot project your feelings onto anybody else. You can't put your ills on someone else and think that's going to make them worse. It's going to make you worse. And the reason is, as Mary Baker Eddy says, the revelation of God is the allness of God, the perfection of life. This is all there is. It's a hard line for a lot of us when we really, and we believe the truth. I believe that truth. I also know where I am, and I know where I am in my studies, and I know when I'm not thinking about the presence of God or the isness of myself and my own perfections. I know that. But I think, as Joel says, as he tries to comfort his students, that one step at a time, Find, if you find every new year, it's like, oh, here we go again. I'm here, and oh, I'm not very happy. What, what can I learn to make this coming year make some sense? How can I have peace? Well, the answer is loving one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's all you have to do. You, you, you were given a lovely personality. You were given integrity. You were, giving pe you were given peaceful thoughts. You were given loving thoughts. That's all you were given. You were given everything. The, the added things will come as you put one foot in front of another. And greater things than this ye shall do. Now, can you imagine when we think of how great Jesus was? Greater things than this ye shall do. We have missions. We have a variety of expressions of God. Every one of us is unique. God loves a blade of grass right up to a star. He's responsible for every creative being and thing and whatever it is. He created it, he loves it, and he's in charge of the entire universe. It is God's universe. And that's why fear we can dismiss. Because if all there is is love, if that's all the universe really is, there's nothing to be afraid of except to love one another, to have everything added unto you. That's all you have to do each day. Get up, be prepared. God, I want to love my neighbor. I want to be peace. 
I want to be all the attributes you gave me of the perfection of my soul, of my Christ mind, which Jesus told us about. He was the spiritual idea that said, I am the Christ as you are the Christ. All we have to do is being loving, kind, give freely. That's almost a proof of your faith. Give freely because you're never without. He talks about the home. Peace in the home is the attitude in your home. Supply. Well, I mean, don't worry about your investments and who you need money from. Worry about how much love are you sharing. There's where your supply comes from. What about war? Joel mentions in the letter, there are no two sides. Love your, all of us are to be loved. And we're safe. Our flesh is safe as we love one another. That's a hard order, isn't it? Think of how we've been inundated with fear on every level that you can think of. So my friends, let's get back to your mission. Every expression is varied from God. As I say, he knows every infinitesimal person and blade of grass. He's given each of us in his incredible, powerful love, unique talents. Some of us write, some of us sing. Some of us are just healers. Some of us just are very privately being mystical. And that is perfect. We don't stand in a, in a stadium saying, look at me and look what I've got and look what I know. This is the part about the infinite way that broke away from the organized church. It's, there's more power in sacredness and secretness that's where the power is. You are on duty wherever you are within yourself because your withinness is with God. Whatever is going on out there, you're privately adjusting it all to the Christ mind that you have inherited because you're a child of God in a varied exp expression. So however that manifests for you, the substance of that is creative. Let me talk about creativity. The consciousness is creative. And when you think of the vastness of being creative, that makes you feel very alive. So each of us has a way. We, there's things that we love to do that make us feel like, oh, I'm, I'm actually growing from expressing myself this way. Think of all the ways you can express yourself. Think of all the folks you can help. There's so many needs out there, and they're more exposed than ever because of where we are that there are so many places to serve. And there's nothing that feels better because as you pour it forth, it is yours. That's the harmony we're looking for. It must leave you to, for you to have it. Think of the varied experiences and expressions that are out there all around you. The uniqueness and the genius of the universe the beauty of this universe always blows my mind. It is absolutely gorgeous. So my friends, step up to the plate. And that requires discipline. Yeah, we know the truth. We're the allness of God. All right, we've got that part perfectly. We're to share our love. We got that part perfectly. How do we go in and out each day remembering? Okay, Infinite Way says meditate, watch your thoughts, transform them, catch them, be on duty, make yourself every whit whole. See what's real. Jesus saw everyone, all his brothers and sisters, as perfect beings. That's all he did. He saw who they really were as invisible spirits. Now let's talk about invisibility. <clears throat> Spirit and truth, th this plane is not the real plane. So the invisible world, you're not going to see looking around here. So the invisible plane is that still small voice the, that, that has authority and dignity, and you can't miss it when it comes. That's our walking on water. And that's something we should expect as we do our homework, as we think of our isness, as we think of our being connected and not separate ever from the God who loves us and who created us whole perfect with unique 
talents. And we're all in different stages of our development and our unfoldment keeps coming. And because it's unfolding, if we're not walking on water yet, be patient. All you have to know is you're unfolding day in and day out. When you wake up in the middle of the night, what are you gonna do? You're gonna think about peaceful thoughts. You're gonna go right to the drawing board. You're gonna establish yourself every minute you can think to do that. Even though you have a life to live, those times when you meditate and you feel the presence, you have to experience the presence for miracles to happen. If you want a miracle, you really have to raise the intensity of that vibration. And that can happen. So that's a wonderful goal, isn't it? So don't you notice, and I'm sure you do if you're interested in the infinite way, you notice you have miracles all day long, right? To what's in the freezer that you forgot to take out. That, that has authority. That has authority, my friends. Those little things every day, in and out. I'm down to the last couple of minutes, my friends, but I just have to tell you, all this work is so priceless and so wonderful. Joel Goldsmith created a beautiful movement for us all as students, and I love the fact that we are only students because it's never over for our learning. We're never there because there's always more. There's more unfolding. There's more to develop within our own selves for our gifts to share. And remember, in the giving is the receiving. It's never going to be any other way. And remember, the presence is waiting for you. He's waiting. The presence, the love is waiting for you. Just check in. Watch your thoughts. Watch how you project onto your brothers and sisters. Correct that for your own sake, for your own peace. Love has always been and will always serve every human need. If you just hang on to that, thank you, Mary Baker Eddy. Love has always met and will always meet every human need. Jesus saw the perfection in everyone, and that's our job. So my friends, the letters written from 32 to 1946 was a graceful way for Joel to try and help his students be patient, I think. That's the imperative. That helped me to be patient with my own growth. And you know, every time I study something and I try and create something to share with you, I'm different. And if I didn't find something each time I show up that changes me, then I wouldn't be doing this. But every time I find something new, and then I, 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 I'm, I'm just more on top of my own practice my own awareness. I love the simplicity of Christian science. And Christian science gave that simplicity to Joel. He expanded it by helping us to see the sacredness of not sharing, not throwing our pearls to just everybody. Not everybody's going to want to hear what you might know. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Think of how Mary Baker Eddy was criticized because she scared people. What do you mean I can heal this or that? But she did have enough going where she did establish a church and shared magnificent metaphysical teaching. And so Joel just took it a step further. And so my friends, he's written 50 books. He's got lots of lectures. Um, Chris Bentley has a wonderful website if you're interested in infiniteways.students.webs.com. For more information, there's joelgoldsmith.com. There, there are many ways to find information on the infinite way. So I, I can only say I love it. I enjoy it. It keeps me going. It keeps me in love with life because life is to be lived, to be full, and to be ecstatically happy. So thank you, my friends, for joining me today on Awaken the Dream. I will talk to you again soon.